Hi everyone, I'm incredibly excited to welcome you to this very first episode of Hooktractive. This podcast is dedicated to making cybersecurity accessible and practical for small and medium-sized businesses. I'm Sevan Keshishian from Hark & Co, and I've spent years in the trenches helping small and medium businesses protect their digital assets without breaking the bank. Let me tell you, I've seen firsthand how overwhelming cybersecurity can feel when you don't have the enterprise level resources. That's exactly why we created this podcast. In each episode, we'll break down complex security concepts, practical steps that you can actually use to protect your business. Coming up in our future episodes, we'll cover everything from a basic security to an advanced threat protection, always keeping it relevant to your environment. We're also gonna share some real case studies interview industry expert, and of course, answer your security questions. Thank you for joining us on this journey and making professional grade security accessible to all businesses. Don't forget, drop us your question and topic suggestion in the comments. We'd love to hear what matters the most to you. With the rise of cyber attacks and data breaches, it's never been more important to make sure that your organization is protected against the hackers. This series is about cybersecurity architectures and fundamentals. We want to start with five security principles that you absolutely should do and one that you never should do. So stay tuned to the end of this series to find out what that one is. The first one, that we are going to talk is the notion of defense in debt. Defense in debt is very simple. It's trying to create an obstacle course difficulty for the bad guy. Let's take a look at an old security model, the castle. The castle was designed with thick, tall walls to keep the good guy on the inside and the bad guys on the outside. It worked pretty well until you realize that the good guy sometimes needs to come out. And therefore, now we need to put a door on this castle. Well, now the door became a vulnerability. So to reinforce the castle, we have to build a moat around. So it become harder for the bad guy to cross. So defense in depth is all about not relying on any single mechanism to keep the system safe. Now let's move and transition into a modern security example. Here we have a user who is on a workstation and he's going to go across the network to a web server, which is going to hit an app server and ultimately going to hit a database. Now, what we do for defense and depth in this situation? Well, one thing I might do here is adding a multi-factor authentication, the MFA. The multi-factor authentication is a multi-step account logging process that requires the users to enter more information than just a password. For example, along with the password, the user might be asked to enter a code sent to his email or answer a secret question or scan a fingerprint. Now, what about here? What I can do here, if it's a mobile device or an endpoint of some sort of a mobile device management, MDN, or an endpoint device management software, I wanna make sure that the security policy that we have set for the organization is in fact follow on this device. Got the right patches, got a password that, uh, that is a sufficient length, and things like that. We might also add something like an EDR or an XDR, which is the new generation antivirus, an edit point detection and response capability to make sure that the platform is secure. Then, from a network standpoint, well, I'm going to add a firewalls to keep the web server secure from the outside. And also allow only traffic that I choose to allow to get back to this more sensitive area. And so for the app server and the web server, I might do some testing, some vulnerability testing on those. So I make sure that those systems are not vulnerable to attack. And then ultimately, I'm going to take that data back here and I'm going to encrypt it, lock it up 
and put access controls uh, all around the uh, database. So you can see what I've done here. There's no single security mechanism that is protecting the things. If any one of these fails, the rest of the system still works. And that is the idea that we are after here. So if you think about it this way, we have got no single point of failure. We are always trying to avoid the single point of failure and we want a system that ultimately, if it fails, it fails safe. That's what the old model and the new model of security were designed to. Thank you for watching us and see you for the next episode.